We'll be live. We'll be live. We'll be live. So I've made it to New York City. You can see the uh, Statue of Liberty behind me, and I couldn't think of a better city to go and check out Black Panther. I went and saw Ryan Coogler's movie, first thing that I could this morning, and I was very impressed by this new superhero tale that we've got. Black Panther is a character that I've always seen on the uh, periphery of the Marvel characters that I've been a little bit more familiar with. I didn't read tons and tons of Black Panther comics growing up, so this is a character that I'm still kind of getting to know. I loved Chadwick Boseman's introduction of the character in Captain America. America, the Civil War, and I was really looking forward to see what the cast and crew did with the Black Panther standalone flick, and I'm not disappointed. This is a very important movie, obviously. This is a, uh, you know, a cultural movement that's happening in the superhero world. This is uh, the superheroes, I mean, they've already been interstellar, we've already had superheroes uh, in space, but this is the first time that we're seeing superheroes in a more of a global setting, and it's opening all kinds of doors. It's really making us think about the idea of these powerful meta humans being international and it kind of leaves us wondering if we're going to start to see not only sequels to Black Panther but other superheroes based in other parts of the world which I think would be phenomenal and fantastic. Now Ryan Coogler is the writer and director of this flick and he's done a, a terrific job sort of meshing a lot of what is familiar to comic book fans out there, but also, uh, you know, modernizing it and updating it and sort of making it feel like it's, uh, you know, another part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It does have a, a distinct kind of look, obviously, and a distinct kind of, uh, you know, identity around itself. There's some familiarity with the way that the story unfolds. Obviously, we've got a hero that's uh, got his own insecurities about whether he's got the stuff to be a leader, because King King T'Challa is also the king of Wakanda uh, and also a superhero. There's a protective kind of quality to the way that Wakanda's uh, superhero kings have led their nation. They've really tried to sort of distance themselves from the rest of the world out there and just sort of govern their own and take care of their own with all of this incredible uh, technology. So T'Challa, who has to deal with the idea of uh, the kings, protecting Wakanda at all costs, also has to kind of butt up and face up against the idea that what they've got within the walls of Wakanda is technology that could benefit the rest of humanity. And I loved that side of the storytelling. Because of that, this movie feels rooted and it feels, uh, it feels palpable and meaningful, you know, and unique. It, in the same kind of way that I, I guess Thor's origin story and us sort of exploring Asgard for the first time on screen. I thought that was really wonderfully done as well because it's just such a crazy cosmic kind of creation and the filmmakers did a good job with that and I feel like there's a similarity, there's almost a parallel kind of quality to this otherworldliness that we get in Black Panther's Wakanda. Don't freeze. I never freeze. I will say that Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger, if he wasn't in this movie, he's electric in this film. He's incredible. Perfect casting, real sense of menace, but uh, a real sense of why he's got that menace, which makes him way more powerful than a lot of the Marvel movie uh, villains have been, because you understand him. You understand why he has this ferocity and this hatred and this desire to usurp King uh, T'Challa and take the throne for himself. and. Those scenes between these two incredible actors are ferocious and fun to watch and uh, you, you feel for both of them and that's just great filmmaking. <laughs> One of my favorite things about the movie too is all of the incredibly strong female characters in here. My favorite actor in this movie is actually Letitia Wright. She is terrific as Shuri. <laughs> Uh, and I don't know if it's the character combination with this terrific performer, but she has the best laugh lines in the flick. You show off. She's the super smart wise ass that comes up with all the cool tech that Black Panther has. Uh, Letitia Wright kills it in this thing. I also really liked uh, Lupita Nyong'o as uh, T'Challa's love interest, but uh, she is a spy and a warrior in her own right. You know, nobody is kind of uh, short slighted in this. Nobody is forgotten. It's just smart filmmaking. You know, that's that's one of the things that really makes Black Panther a special experience. Every character has a moment to shine, and there's a real respect played. And I, I also feel like T'Challa isn't this super cool guy that has it all figured out. He's a fallible hero in the making that's just trying to figure out how to reconcile the loss of his father and his importance in the uh, the chronology of the Black Panthers. He wants to be a good king. He wants to take Take care of his people but you know his world kind of changes and and he's sort of 
uh, led into the idea and the understanding that a lot of what has been good for Wakanda could be good for the rest of humanity. Really, really smart stuff there. You won't have protection! Neither will he. The one thing that kind of took me out of it a little bit was that there's a lot of CG work in here, not just in, you know, like spaceship effects and, and cool technologies and weaponry and stuff like that, but there's also uh, a lot of, you know, CG mat work and lots of sort of people playing up against green screen. It kind of took me out of here. And when I looked at the credits, because you got to stay for the after credits little scenes there, uh, you could see that they shot in Korea and they shot in, uh, in Georgia, but they didn't really shoot a bunch of stuff in Africa. And I think that's kind of a missed opportunity. They, they certainly, uh, you know, represent the beauty of what Africa means. And, and there's lots of panning shots where they superimpose affected ships and things like that on them. But I almost wish that the filmmakers and Marvel had said, look, we're going to we're going to take this cast, this incredible cast, and we're going to go and shoot a bunch of exteriors and a bunch of cool stuff in Africa. That would have been great. And I'm kind of nitpicking because this is, I think, a marvelous tale and a marvelous uh, recreation of the Black Panther lore. And I don't think any fan out there is going to be disappointed. It fits snugly inside of the MCU in a, in a smart way. I'm absolutely looking forward to seeing Black Panther in The Avengers, and I'm looking forward to seeing a sequel. This movie's gonna be a monster hit, and it deserves to be one. It was fantastic to see how many fans turned up for this. I went to a 10 o'clock in the morning screening. It was packed, and there were tons of people lined up for the screenings for the rest of the day. It deserves to be a monster hit. It's a great movie, and it's uh, you know obviously challenging a lot of the status quo, which is terrific. Black Panther is great. I can't, you know, call this one my favorite Marvel movie yet. I need to see it a few more times, but it's absolutely worth your time. I'm going to give Black Panther a 9 out of 10.